make it faster because we are a bit late. Uh, maybe, okay, let's start with the structure. I'm not sure if I need to explain to all of you the meaning of uh, the term convergence and income or economic convergence and the theories related to this uh, term and because we are short of time maybe I will uh, emphasize on the result and conclusions but let me pass through the uh, slides uh, <coughs> the statement behind uh, all of this, the idea behind this lecture is that uh, uh, open market economies are expected to equalize in terms of uh, income of a different factor or different factor prices. But uh, we expect that for the last 100 years and still we do not see it happening. Uh, and I forgot to say I chose this topic because of, at the previous school, uh, summer school of SEQ, I've seen a lot of uh, students' um, reports uh, devoted on the poverty and inequality and I will try to give my contribution to that area. Also, one of the significant uh, uh, goals of uh, sustainable <coughs> development is equality and uh, poverty uh, reduction, and this topic is heavily related with that. First, convergence is unification or equalization. Let's keep that, you don't need that. The economic convergence, actually the idea that we are going to discuss is the idea that per capita incomes in different countries is uh, expected uh, to equalize due to the fact that uh, countries with lower income are expected to grow faster than the countries with high incomes. Why they are expected uh, to do so, uh, the main reasons are to very uh, popular economic uh, theories, the Kekscher knowledge model and the solo growth model. Uh, the both, of, both of them are awarded with the Nobel Prize. Uh, Kekscher and model is very, very popular. Everyone that uh, has taken the course in international economics is familiar with it. It uh, divides the countries in the world into large groups, uh, countries that are endowed with capital and countries endowed with uh, labor. The expectation of this model is that uh, if this uh, region are trading free with each other, uh, there will be a time that the factor prices in these two regions will equalize. I will not uh, uh, get into details of that, but uh, this is not actually the main conclusion of the model, but it is uh, additional um, inference from uh, the texture and poly model. The idea is that capital <coughs> in those countries will export capital intensive goods. This will increase the demand for capital in their countries and therefore increase its price. And in other group of countries, this will happen with labor. So in uh, the labor in those countries, uh, we will see increase of price of labor or uh, wages. And in other countries or developed countries, we will see decrease of price of labor and increase in the price of capital. If we have free trade, we will uh, have exactly the same wages and price of capital in the whole world. And we don't have. You may conclude why. Uh, Bertolone received the Nobel Memorial Prize in 77. Uh, the other uh, theory that uh, is interesting, more interesting for our uh, topic, is the solo growth model. Solo tried to explain the uh, economic growth with three factors, capital stock, labor stock, and technological uh, advancement. And the assumptions of the model include that uh, if there is no technological change and uh, we have fixed labor stock and the standard uh, assumptions of economic models that uh, constant depreciation rate and diminishing return on capital, 
uh, national economy uh, will grow or will have economic growth only if uh, the country is below the so-called uh, steady state level. This is actually the term that I'm interested in this uh, lecture, the steady state level. I will explain what does it mean. This is the representation of the idea of solo about the steady state. Uh, the first, the more interesting line is the blue one. This is investment per worker. Uh, you all know that increasing investment usually allows the workers to become more productive. And with the increase of investment, the blue line, we have uh, increase of the product. The first, you see the slope is very steep. This means that uh, small increase of investment will increase uh, productivity faster than the increase of investment. This means increase of productivity. There is a spot somewhere in the line that increase of investment causes the same increase of product, the end product. This means the product continues to increase, but not the productivity. So adding more capital to the production function is indifferent to the end result. And there is a time here where the red line crosses the blue one, uh, where the depreciation actually becomes higher than the new investment. This means that increasing investment will actually cause uh, decrease in the total production. This is the point that we are interested in. The idea behind this uh, in relation to convergence is that when a country is somewhere, somewhere in this region, it is easy to cause economic growth by just adding more capital to the system. And these countries grow fast because it's easy for them. There are existing technologies, there are existing ways to increase your productivity. They just can borrow, uh, borrow it from other countries. Here, it's something different. Adding more capital to your system does not cause increase in productivity. Actually, it would cause decrease in productivity. So, in these countries, we say they reach the steady state and they cannot grow with the same speed as the other. This is uh, the notion behind the convergence. The idea that some countries will go faster just because their level of uh, income is uh, lower. And this is, uh, Robert Sol also received the Nobel Prize in economics. Uh, this is not, again, it is not uh, the main conclusion of the model of soul, it is additional uh, inference from that. But uh, these both models started a large debate in economic literature that uh, created the idea and hypothesis of uh, economic convergence. And they were joined by this list, at least this list of uh, notable scientists, for example, Paul Samuelson, also has received uh, Nobel Prize in Economics and Abel Werner and other uh, famous scientists in economics. The idea of uh, convergence is extended nowadays with uh, the attempts of measuring it. This is the uh, beta convergence uh, theory, the idea that we could measure the presence of convergence with this simple, simple linear regression. We try to regress the economic growth on the level of income. So uh, of the uh, expectation is that we uh, find negative beta parameter. And if beta is negative, this means that the lower the income per capita in country is, the faster it is uh, expected to grow. It is a very, very simple uh, instrument for measuring or proving convergence. 
This is called beta convergence because we use the value of uh, parameter beta. Uh, beta shows us the speed of convergence and we need it to be negative to uh, have convergence at all. The other way of measuring convergence is the real convergence. It is actually the dispersion between the incomes in a group of countries. The larger the sigma is, the larger the differences between the countries are, so larger sigma means that there is no convergence. Small sigma means there is a convergence. It is interesting to see uh, this over time, not uh, as a static uh, value. So we tried uh, the first one, the better convergence. Uh, I've used uh, quarterly data in order to extend my time series uh, for all European countries. Uh, we found negative beta, very small value, but negative. This is good. Maybe you've noticed the low values of R squared. But this is due to the uh, lots and lots of unincluded variables, and this uh, uh, worsens the predicted value of the model. Uh, I've tried with uh, fixed country effect and it increases the uh, predictive value significantly. This means that the model could be improved with additional variables, but I'm not interested in that. I just needed this value, so I continued with this. This value of uh, beta means that we have convergence, that the lower the initial income is, the faster the countries grow. And how much faster this means, uh, this is the way that we uh, measure uh, this uh, beta in, um, translated in time terms. This is actually the uh, formula that is used to uh, evaluate the half-life of radioactive elements. It's the same way uh, we uh, translate the convergence speed into time uh, uh, metrics. This uh, means that uh, with this speed of uh, convergence, uh, the difference between the richest country in Europe, Luxembourg, and the poorest, Bulgaria, will be reduced in half for 62 years. Uh, this is very, very slow convergence, but uh, we still uh, have uh, uh, proof that convergence exists. Even this is so slow that if we uh, see the sigma convergence over time, we will see that with this speed of economic growth, the difference between countries is actually growing. It is not narrowing. This means that with this speed, we, for example, Bulgaria, we are growing faster than other countries. But our initial level is so small that this faster growth does not help us reduce the difference. Maybe after 20, 30 years, this fast growth will give us basic uh, income that will allow us allow us to decrease the difference with this faster uh, uh, development. This is actually the explanation. Uh, we have convergence, but so slow, so small, that actually for now, let's hope for now, does not help us to reduce the uh, difference. Actually, this is uh, related with the notion of uh, Moses Abramowitz. He said that convergence that is, uh, is not obligatory for all countries. It happens only if you have social and uh, uh, other uh, economic uh, or generally capabilities of countries to attract capital, to attract technologies, and to develop. It is uh, not uh, obligatory to grow faster if you're poor or fast enough to become rich. You need to put some effort in it mainly in a uh, uh, judicial system, in laws that uh, 
defend the private property and the free market and other things. But I told you in the beginning that I'm interested in something else. This was only a preparation. I needed to prove uh, convergence in order to look to uh, the steady state uh, uh, hypothesis. I'm interested if I could find a point in my data that uh, has a significant change over the value of beta. I've used a segmented regression for that. This uh, system of equations helps us to find this point of breaking of uh, the value of beta. I'm interested in a value that is uh, uh, positive. I look a point in, uh, for a point in my data that beta becomes positive. Uh, this will mean that there is no convergence after this point or uh, after the change of this of the income. Here are the results and I found that uh, this point exists and it is uh, this is a special way of uh, looking into the data for the segmented regression or threshold regression also it's called. Uh, it pointed out that this uh, observation 668, which translates to an income of 3,511 uh, euros per period. I remind you that I use quarterly data, so this means 14,000 euro annually. Uh, an explanation again. This means that countries that have income below 14,000 euros grow faster and in these countries, low level of income actually causes economic growth because for them it's easier to uh, employ capital in uh, production. And after this, countries with annual per capita income more than 14,000 uh, euros actually cannot increase their um, economic growth by just adding capital they need to do something else. So this is the point that this theoretical steady state actually, according to my attempt to find this uh, economic unicorn, is 14,000 euro, especially for my group of countries for this period of time, because, it, uh, because technologies are changing constantly. It is true only for this time and this group of countries. This is representation of the countries in the European Union, or the data say, and the uh, level of the steady state. This red line shows us what? What are the countries that have reached and even surpassed the steady state level, and the countries that are yet to reach it? This means uh, Portugal is right exactly at the steady state. This means what? What does it mean for this group of countries? Can you remember? I will remind you the solo growth model. It's not a rhetorical question. Eh? Uh, this is the last uh, slide, so this is the time for discussion, and if you, uh, someone uh, has a question, be free to ask it now. We will not have a separate uh, section for discussion because our time is also very short. Okay, again, I will ask you, because you're not asking anything, what does it mean, this red line, for the countries that are higher here? Or the other one? It's the opposite. Yes, Leonidas? Uh, they cannot increase their growth by just uh, adding capital. Yeah, they cannot grow. They cannot grow, yes. In this but they are growing. Yes. No, but, but they cannot with just adding capital. Yeah. How could they grow? Uh, maybe with uh, R&D, the technology advance. And? Uh, Increasing flavor stuff. Mm -hmm. These are the only two 
ways for these countries to grow. Increase technology, uh, improve technology, or increase population. You know, I don't, I'm not sure if you could read the countries, because it's, uh, but the countries are Germany, Belgium, United Kingdom, Netherlands, Sweden, Denmark. Population growth in these countries is negative. All of them, the natural population. So they have additional problems, uh, not only the uh, decreasing return on capital, but decreasing population. So the only way for them is technology, which is actually the relation with our topic here, the sustainable development. Sustainable development, uh, for me, means finding new ways to use resources, not just increasing the extraction of resources to improve our life, which was for the most of the human history until now. In the 60s, uh, I think it starts with the paper of uh, what uh, Gerald Hardin, The Tragedy of the Commons. He found out that uh, we cannot continue uh, like that, to increase the extraction of resources just to improve our uh, well-being. We need to find better ways to use what we have in order to guarantee the future uh, generations that they will have a sufficient uh, standard of living or at least similar to ours. Uh, this <coughs> result for me shows that most of the countries in Europe have reached and even surpassed this point that in which they could improve their way of living just by adding resources. They need technology or people, speaking strictly economically. You see Germany here, according to this research, Germany could not improve its financial or economic uh, situation by adding capital. But four years ago, three years ago, was the best year of the economic history of Germany, in the whole history of Germany. You know why? Something improved there significantly. They cannot. They have capital. They have most capital of all uh, European countries, but they have. Uh, they cannot use it. They added people. They added one million people just in, within one year. They have received it from Syria. And what? Uh, not only, but uh, Bulgaria. Uh, yeah, they have regular inflow from other countries, but in this uh, year, they had a sudden additional inflow of one million refugees from Syria. And for countries like that, it sorry, uh, we are sorry to say that, but economic-wise, it is very, very lucrative because this is the easiest way to improve their economic situation because it adds workers that can you, you can supply with capital. You have this capital that you cannot give to workers. And when you import these workers, now your capital is profitable again. Okay. 